I loved it. I loved it because I never approached the work, the role, as anything less or different from a Shakespearean heroine, of many of which I'd played by the time I got to television at 36 in that way. Um, I loved the family feel that was there at South Pacific Pictures at the time. And I enjoyed the um, opportunity to play somebody that I felt perhaps the programme hadn't explored quite so much earlier. And that was somebody who was from a more working class background. And I liked that very much because it was something that I identified with and felt I could. I was definitely in the rum and coke territory in my mind, not the Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> I liked her guts, I liked her, um, I liked her morality, which was sometimes suspect. I thought that was a much truer version of events. And I also liked the fact that, that she was capable. There's many things about, you know, inside that hospital environment, there's doctors and nurses saving lives, but a person who is capable is somebody who can make you a cup of tea and make it not better, but allow you to find the ability to make it better in yourself. And she was one of those true characters, like Marge before her. The connections people make with you are, are often manifested in the most um, extraordinary ways. I used to get cards of condolence when one of my husbands died or if something belonged to me was stolen people would post in replacements that's you know that they, they had suspended their disbelief to that extent and you have to be really responsible with that as an actress it, that's a precious thing an audience and their belief in you is something that you must honor with Mr. Gormsby, it was a chance to really explore the ugly. And I love that on screen. When you are free to be as... as exploratory about the things that we consider um, we don't want an audience to see. I mean, one of my delights on day one was being told I was going to have a great big mole with hairs growing out of it on my chin. And then you're marrying this terrible sort of controlling freak character, Marion, who is a plumptious woman of a certain age with a rampant sexuality, who's also trying to be a bureaucrat and politically correct. And I just thought that was magnificent. I would have loved to have done more of that. You know, I think it happened, and I think it went to air in New Zealand, and I think people, it was so beyond the wire that they sort of didn't notice it or think it was for real. And of course, it's went mad in Australia, as we know, and I have met the schoolboys. There is a particular club in Sydney or Melbourne that's devoted to Gormsby, and it's, yes, it's teenage boys. <laughs> I think Mr. Gormsby was a bit before its time here. Dancing with the Stars was something I had never imagined myself doing in a million years. And I think I've said repeatedly, people laughed when I told them I was approached, which made me think, and I feel this now at 48, my vocation, my career as an actress is about challenges. Otherwise, I may as well stop. And Dancing with the Stars was one of those challenges because people thought I couldn't, I decided I would. And of course there have been ramifications like injuries to feet and so forth, but the experience was wonderful. There was never a question I would win, so I didn't feel the pressure of the competition really. And I mean, competition anyway, it's anathema to me. I don't, actors don't think like that. I never remembered it was television because it was like coming and doing a live theatre performance every week. And you'd have the, you know, a couple of days before intense rehearsal and then it would be the countdown and you knew it was opening night. That was the feeling every week, opening night. 
I loved working with Stefano. I loved the band and all the frippery and nonsense. It was like music hall. When I was asked to do King Kong, I actually had a name as well, Maud, and um, to be part of the vaudeville troupe, that sort of thing, to be working with one of the stars, Naomi Watts, directed by Peter. I just thought it was a little, little actress died and gone to heaven, really. She was a joy and a bliss to play. I loved it. I loved being directed by Peter. I found him... Um, even with the small amount of work that I had to have, and of course we say there's no small parts, extremely helpful. And the sets were wonderful to work on. Yes, it was a great experience all round. I had that lovely thing that is possibly, it's part of the richness of being an actress in New Zealand, is that there were days of the week when I was going and having this lovely caravan to myself and my wonderful makeup and costumes made for me and being on set and doing all of this big budget film. And in the following week, I was performing my own one woman show in a cafe in Petoni, where I think I'd put it on for about sort of 25 cents. And so it was a lovely sort of experience of the opposite ends of the spectrum of what it is to be an actress in New Zealand. <laughs> The first time I met the director, Paul Murphy, um, I asked him to help me out of a very low sofa, and he did, and I thought, what a gentleman he is. And he proved to be, throughout the entire experience, somebody who was well brought up by his mother, somebody who cared about the people he was working with. That's what makes him a good director, because he had care. He is a very intelligent man, so intelligent that he will listen to the people who know more than he knows, like Richard, the DOP, or his mother in this instance, Pat, who is in continuity. He was never frightened to take someone else's input or opinion. Working with the actors, he very definitely grew the story with us and made you trust him. Every day we went to work, and I think genuinely everyone enjoyed being there. I think the saddest moment, though, was the day before wrap, and I remember it was very bad weather, and we were doing one of the f sequences with the yellow mini, and I was driving. And I remember the window had to be open, and the rain was driving in in the wind, and I got completely saturated, and... It was difficult, it was difficult to say the line's difficult to do the sequence and I felt quite overwhelmed by it. And I began, I think I got upset and started to cry and then I couldn't stop. And I realised that that was actually grief, knowing that this lovely time was coming to an end. That I remember very distinctly. It's quite an odd feeling when you can't stop crying. It's very irritating for other people when they're trying to get a film shot as well. <laughs> I play frequently very small parts that are hugely character filled. And so I'm required to jump in the deep end of the pool, swim, not drown, and get out again within 30 seconds. And that's an enormous challenge and a rewarding one. Um, I try not to say no to anything. Everything that I've said yes to has proved to be uh, something that has only expanded my experience and, and my world. <laughs>